Hi. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the uh, South Asian Arts and Culture Association of Alberta for putting on such a great event. It's great to see you. And uh, more events like this are needed so that uh, the community can engage with uh, candidates. Secondly, I'd like to thank all the candidates for putting your name forward. It takes a very um, strong person and a very, um, courageous person to put your name on a ballot, put yourself out there, and sit at this table. So again, congratulations. As, as we sit here in our somewhat privileged seats, um, there's a memorial going on. The Friendship Center for uh, David Cardinal. He was a homeless person, a homeless person for many years in this region, a, a very uh, a well-liked person and a part of our community. So, too often forgotten part of our community, but an important part. Um, I, talking to some of the service providers over the last 10 months, approximately eight <laughs> Aboriginal homeless people have passed away on our streets. Um, and and it's, a, it's a huge problem. It will be a growing problem as uh, oil prices go down. I'm, we've been talking a lot about priorities and, and where you guys as future councillors, or one of you at least as a future councillor, what your priority would be. Um, what what are you planning to do for the most at risk people in our uh, in our community? An entire question to that is part of the strain I feel that that's happening in in the downtown where you guys will be representing is the lack of resourcing that's gone out to the rural hamlets. And there's been many debates not not too long ago. Um, you might remember Community Conklin came up and uh, when there was concern. Rightfully or wrongfully, that you know some of the promises that came with amalgamation were not going to be fulfilled on. So the follow-up question to that is, what's your feelings on that? And if you were voting councillors, what would you do to move on the promises of amalgamation given the uh, given the current uh, situation with the drop in price of oil? Thank you. Right. Yeah. And for whomever for whomever wishes to take that. Who wants to volunteer for the first shot of that? Please stand up and be shot. So, the issue of homeless in our community is something that I actually have a real heart for. I grew up uh, many times, I don't know if anyone remembers Harry, but Harry came into my life many times over the years. And he was a, a habitual homeless uh, man that dealt with addictions issues throughout many, many years. And when I grew up, I was a child. And uh, I grew up going to AA meetings around us and all these different things. And Harry was a, a figure that came in and out of my life as a child. And my family always um, tried to reach out to him and many other homeless people uh, throughout the time. My father made a real point of instilling that in me. And my father actually goes out every Saturday still right now and uh, ministers to homeless, ministers to people in need, and uh, offers that support to them and has a real heart for that. So I've grown up with this uh, being a real issue in my life over the years and something that I learned that the value of a person isn't necessarily linked to their social status or how clean their clothes are or when they last ate or if they're sober or not sober. So it's an important issue to me and I feel like um, Housing First is a good initiative but we also have to support the core issues of addictions and mental health issues that people have and uh, we have to support that. We have to fight for better health care, better access to support. Um, I've had many people again within my family that have addictions issues. I have an uncle that's homeless right now. And the support isn't there. If you want to get into rehab, if you need help and you go to ask for it, it's not available. And that is a real shame because we tell people that you need to ask for help. The first step is admitting you have a problem and you need to ask for help and it's not available. Thank you. Sorry. Anybody else on this? <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. First of all, thank you for the question. That's a great question and one that we do need to have. It, not necessarily popular to talk about in a lot of forums, but necessary to talk about. So there's a couple answers within the answer. Uh, first and foremost, I believe that we have some amazing charities out here that tirelessly do a, a fantastic job, the best that they can, uh, supporting that community. 
concern. Uh, so one of the things that I believe we should be doing is uh, funding them, making sure they're fully funded and supporting them. Uh, less bureaucracy, less less uh, politicians involved in that. We should uh, should allow the charities to do the work that they do. Uh, obviously, they want to be overseen, but uh, they do a great job on their own. Make sure they're well funded. The other part of it is um, we need to expand on the issues of it. You know, is it mental health? Is it addictions? Like Colin said, they are hard to access. Uh, personally, as a union, we deal with it on a regular basis. We have a lot of people come in to ask us for help. Um, I can't tell you how many times, and I'm sure my boss Kevin could tell you how many times I've picked someone up who was on the break. I've picked them up, I've driven them where they needed to go, I've sat in the hospital with them, I've, I've uh, taken them to Tim Hortons, sober them up before I drop them off at the detox center. Mm -hmm. It is a problem, it's a major problem, and we need to work at it. Um, the other part of the question is, what are we gonna do for the outlying communities? Those communities are equals. We did amalgamate, and they do belong to the Wood Buffalo. We need to have an ear at the table for them. We need to create forums for them to come and sit with us and discuss the issues. Um, we need to support them, and we need to do that with all levels of government, not just the municipality. All levels should be at the table, and we should have their ears. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks again for the question, and in regards to uh, the work that Center Hope does, the work that the Salvation Army does, uh, the opportunities that the community has, and we were having this conversation with uh, Doug Tolger earlier, in regards to inclusion and the diversity of our community, and the opportunities for volunteering, and the opportunity to participate in the good work that uh, all these uh, agencies do. And really the best place to start is uh, to volunteer to embed yourself or to increase or feel uh, included in the community is through volunteer work and the uh, great opportunities. Um, as far as taking outlying areas and, uh, and putting facilities out there that may not get the utilization and the, uh, make cost effective decisions, you know, that, that money can be better spent in other directions. But I really appreciate you bringing that to the forefront because it's up. It is a good question. I think you've heard from all the candidates here how we feel about homelessness. It needs to be addressed, but it is a very, very large picture. I think for anyone to give a snapshot and say this is the answer would be doing a disservice to a question that in that magnitude. I did want to speak to our outlying communities and the amalgamation question. The amalgamation question is very important. We had a promise, we've actually had a plan. Uh, five or six years ago, the municipality put forward a study that showed what the different communities were needing and how they compared and what was needed. That study ended abruptly. The administration staff associated with it disappeared and we never ever did anything with it. It needs to be done because there is that promise. We took all these, all the tax bases from all these communities and brought it into the RMWB. Now it's, we have to get this done. The longer we wait, it's not getting any cheaper. So I am totally for it, but I am for it responsibly. A prime example of, of it going or, or wrong, we'll say, is Anzac. Anzac, we, got, we built a $50 million uh, Recreational Center. Thank you. That was two minutes. That's two minutes. Thank you very much. I'll remember with that. I'll ask two questions. Ask all of them. Use that. Okay. Um, when I first moved here, when I was 10 years old, actually, one of the things our mom took us to do, my sister and I, we went and worked in the soup kitchen. And one of the great things about that is you get to meet a lot of people, and I've seen some of those individuals become successful in life, and I think it's because of programs like that where people step up and fill a social need. Um, the municipality is definitely part of that process through encouragement, through grant writing, or grant processes, that kind of thing, um, and I think that's part of our social responsibility. Um, as a transit rider, I rode transit predominantly until I was about 23 years old. I didn't get my license. And you met the most interesting people on the transit bus and you had the most interesting conversations. And I invite 
all the candidates to spend time on a transit bus and you will meet some of the amazing people who are having struggles in Port Macquarie and they're very willing to talk. Um, look, just looking at that kind of thing, I really think mental health is a huge issue in our province. It's something that as teachers we're dealing with on a daily basis as well in children. Um, we're seeing that strain all across the board. There's organizations like the Northeastern Alberta Beta Alcohol Syndrome, um, sorry, <laughs> association uh, that helps with those kind of things for preventative measures, working with women who are at risk of um, drinking while pregnant, that kind of thing. But we're looking at what other programs can we help foster, and really that's a healthcare issue. So we need to talk with our MLAs. We need to ask those government organizations, what are you doing for Fort McMurray? These are some issues. How are we working with the other communities, the rural communities? What do they need? What are they not getting? And finally, I said this again on my Ask Veronica, is that I want rural residents to talk to me. I had a parent at my school angry that they couldn't vote because they lived down Draper Road, and I said, you can still give me your concerns, and I will be that voice. It doesn't stop because I'm not in your ward. We need to be informed as Ward 1 councillors about everything in the community. It can't just be, oh, you're from that ward, I'm not talking to you. Um, I wanted to address the rural issues first because I'm seeing and hearing more and more issues coming because of lack of sewer and water. Um, also, there's a lot of um, local calls from Conklin and John A. Um, where they're actually having to be airlifted out of that area. So I don't think our concern should ever be focused just on one particular area. For Chip, um, there's all kinds of concerns in that up there as well that I think the municipality took on that responsibility with Malamation and hopefully will continue to put those services in place for them. Um, on your first uh, question again, like Mike said, that it's such a huge uh, question. Personally in Fort McMurray, um, our agencies are doing a fantastic job, but they're always the first thing that gets cut in the budgets, the nonprofits. And I speak uh, from personal experience on that. Um, it frustrates me to no end when our support through housing budget is cut immediately um, when they're talking about budget cuts and they're not seeing how, you know, a $9,000 difference to us on that board is so enormous. We could do so much with an extra $9,000 a year. So when you see them talking about a project that like Nexus North, $100,000, I was screaming at the TV that night saying, give it to a board that could do five years work in Fort McMurray. Um, and the other issue for um, particularly Aboriginal women in Fort McMurray, there is a tremendous lack of services for those Aboriginal women. I'd like to see more outreach done for them. Um, and that could be funded through different um, nonprofits or social profit groups in Fort McMurray as well. Um, our Aboriginal women have a huge stigma hanging over their head. They are not serviced properly in any um, service in Fort McMurray, really, and I've seen it personally, whether Thank it's you. healthcare or education. Thank you. One uh, question, please. One, one, one <laughs> question. Um, no, thanks for that, and I appreciate that everybody took the time to answer. Um, but a number of the answers, while I agree and are great, they were, they were big, so I'm gonna break it down to the concrete. And um, with the Willow Square, with the transfer of Willow Square, um, one of the commitments in there was mixed housing and, and mixed responsibility, including low-cost housing, because that's what was there before, and then that's what was taken away. Um, there's been a huge backlash in the community on that issue, particularly from a certain segment in the seniors community that this should not be mixed housing, and that you know this space should just be set aside for. Um, the seniors in the community, which I agree, they, they need space too. I'm, I'm curious, but I mean, for all, all the reasons that the seniors say there should be space, it also makes sense that, you know, Housing First should get space in that in that area. You know, other at-risk people should get space in that area also. Um, I'm curious whether any of you would be willing to speak to this topic and, and what your feelings are and what, you would, and what your vision for that space is. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna cut you guys down to a minute, so please keep your think very short because we've got two more questions coming and we are running out of time so stick to just short questions. That's a difficult question for one minute but um, the seniors were promised that land 
for years. And um, I think that's why there's so much emotion connected to that Willow Square piece of land. Um, we can the candidates for MLAs or MPs or whoever came and stood in front of those signs and said, give us the land for seniors. So when you make promises like that publicly over and over and over again, the expectation is there for those seniors. And so I, for that particular area, I'd love to see affordable housing and stuff included in the plan, but at the same time, I'm very torn because, again, it was promised to the seniors. It, I think it should be developed for the seniors so that they can access the services in the downtown core. Tony, do you have anything to say about this? Uh, One minute, thanks. Okay, uh, it's very hard issue because we're taking, we took something from someone that needed it and then to give it to someone else that needs it and they both have, still have a need at the end of the day. So again, if we go back to the point of um, no one is valued based on their social stature and people uh, were in that relationship <coughs> before that needed a support and I didn't feel um, unsafe or unwelcome or any of these other things. There was no zombies coming out from that area and it worked before. But at the same time, the seniors, absolutely, they have so much emotion attached to it and they have valid reasons for it and they deserve a space that is there <coughs> that they can feel like they're connected to, that they feel comfortable in and that they feel meet their needs. So it's not an easy question, and I think that we need to somehow be able to not say, um, you get it, but you don't get it. How can we work together to make something that works for um, the broader picture and meet the needs of the people that built this community, as well Thank as you. meet our requirements of the land? Thank you. Sorry for cutting you guys off. Seeing as I only have one minute, I'll echo most of what Verna said and then put a little spin on it. So if the land is such size that it must uh, accommodate two things, divide the land up, separate the two. What the seniors are asking for is space that's their own. Uh, they're asking for a quiet space. We're also hearing that there must be commercial on the ground floor due to flood restraints and things like that. Well, if there must be, then why don't we put services that are pertinent to the seniors. Let's put pharmacy on there. Let's put uh, doctor's office, chiropractors. Let's put things that would be a benefit to the seniors. Maybe a small coffee shop, I don't know. Um, give them services that they need. And uh, we got lots of doctor's offices in the Plaza <coughs> Mall. Thank you. We've moved a few of them. Over. Somebody else that wants to speak to it, please. Nobody? Thank you. I did, but I want to hear the other questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Jacqueline. I turned 25 next week and I live in my parents' basement. <laughs> Why is that? You said so, money, eh? Yeah, you did. I want to speak to my demographic. Um, a lot of my friends, I was raised here, very fruitful upbringing, very fortunate. Got to try or score on every recreational activity I wanted. I ended up going and playing on a university uh, scholarship for volleyball. A lot of it was due to the fact that my parents could provide that service to me from been here. So it's amazing. I'm a huge advocate for Fort McMurray. However, now that I've graduated, I have a degree. Um, I would live fully independently away from here when I was in university. Again, being a summer student here in between every year was very helpful. Summer students make a lot of money here. But I come back not a university student with a degree. I have a fantastic job right now working for a not-for-profit organization that directly affects the community. Because I didn't want to just go work out of sight. And I'm finding, well, and originally, I'm just trying to give you back on my story before I ask the question, sorry. Um, I wanted to come back here and work for a couple of years and save money and go back and get my master's. I landed this sweet job that makes me say, hey, I might even change my career path because I want to give back to my community. And if it is the community that's given so much to me and my family and my friends, and out of all our friends, we're all living with our parents right now that have moved back, by the way, that have great jobs. Um, how am I going to stay and what's going to make me want to stay if I can't live independently if I'm single and have to rent out someone's basement? Why would I stay and give back to my community if I can't afford it? Even though I'm making more here than I'd make in another province doing the same position. What can you guys do to help? Thank you. Thanks. Uh, anybody who wants? Yes. <coughs> I think one of 
the biggest things that you can do to help in being that demographic is encouraging those people to vote and get someone of that demographic to have that voice. So you need people who have gone through that experience, who have moved away for post-secondary, come back and found themselves in that situation. We're not all site workers. Um, those are fantastic. I'm married to one. <laughs> and, um, but that's the reason myself and my husband were able to buy a home at 20 and 21 in Fort McMurray is because of that income. I certainly didn't contribute. I was still a post-secondary student. So it's definitely looking at ways, how do we make housing affordable? How do we encourage um, that diversification of land? Right now, Wood Buffalo Housing and Development Corporation has a really small wait list, but how do we prepare for the next influx? How are we making sure that those projects continue? While well, we're not overbuilding so that it's no longer a need, that, um, that we're having empty locations, we need to make sure that we have locations available when we need them without spending too much money to develop Thank you. them. They're not needed. Anybody else? I forgot, a minute. <laughs> I'll do an ask around the question. <laughs> Thank you. Part of that downtown development we talked about with those smaller housing, that was sort of the plan for your age group. My son's 24, uh, my daughter's 21, so I totally get it. I want to come out of the house. We're leaving. Right. But, but one of the things, I mean, parents can really help with that. And what we do is we charge our kid rent and then we give it back to the everything they pay to help put a down payment on a house or a place to live. We need to solve the, the uh, affordable housing. Our lease brings things down as reasonable. The problem is we can't do it carte blanche. If we lower the market of the houses here by 10%, we lose the financial people that will that'll help support finance them, and people will simply walk. We have to do it in a controlled way where uh, it doesn't crash the market here. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. No, no. Thank you, Andrew. Not a very, you want to ask a question? Uh, well, you want to say oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't see you ahead. Sorry, sir. I apologize. Sorry. So once again, an incredible question. Uh, I echo some of the same comments. Uh, there is funding and programming for affordable housing. Does it go far enough? That's that's a fair question. Fair. That's absolutely debatable. So one of the things we have to do is make it easier to access those programs and work to enhance them. Um, if we did get high density residential downtown, the hope would be that it would be uh, cheaper, cheaper land available and more affordable to move into. Um, I'm not that far off from where you were, I stepped into a much larger mortgage now, and you know, we're two of us are working, and we're we're doing all right. I mean, we're not, but it's it's tough. Um, but as a homeowner, we also got to find a way to prevent, like Michael said, prevent land value from going down. So, how do you balance the needs in, of the two of them? Um, they are conflicting with each other, and the answer is to get support from all levels of government. There's a lot that comes out of this town. How much comes back in, and we need to be loud. We need people to uh, stand up and say, don't Thank you, sir. Right, uh, I'm going to ask the next question. Everyone, a very please. Yes. I, I am going to have to ask a question because I realize everybody is anxious that questions are coming. I'm not here to ask a question. I'm here to compliment you guys. But also to lament that there is one person who has never said anything. It's not democratic. He's sat there, he's not saying nothing. He is keeping the time. He, oh, he's watching you too. <laughs> he, did, he does want to ask a question, but he cannot since he's part of the uh, organizers. Yeah, I have that many questions with me, but nobody's allowed me to talk. <laughs> <laughs> you see, he's not coming up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's a commendable thing that you have to do. It's commendable to sustain democracy and keep it right. I help you when you ask this question. Help me understand, if, if you could, uh, how come when you arrived to council, which I was doing also in 2018, we work, we work almost closely, and after that we become dysfunctional. But we are aware that in the engine we are talking about takes into, into, into account a lot of all. <laughs> Are you aware that you see? Democracy.
press it keeps on moving. I would love to see a, a, a committee or a, a forum which continues to highlight issues even after this, so that you see we don't lose grip of what is happening and we continue to give pressure. That, that's what lobbying is all about. We, 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 we become very strong and then loosen up and give no room for the councillors to wake up. They go into sleep and then they come up, wake up again during elections. This is the negotiated thing. Do we have no land in Fort McMurray? That's my first question. Do we have no land? Or do we have no proactive councillors together with MLAs, together with federal MPs, who stand constantly, continuously, to ask for certain rights so that what we are talking about would come to fruition, right? The housing uh, or the, the, the place space for the old people, right? The issue of diversification of industry so that we don't see the room like what it is now. There's depression in Fort McMurray because people are leaving Fort McMurray. Instead of making it a home, they are leaving it because we are relying on oil. There's a lot of things which we could do. So I'm asking this question. Do we not have land here? We have land. What is happening? I feel that the council is not in danger. Please prove me wrong and tell me how else it could be done. Colleen, you were there before. What happens? Why can't you engage aggressively, persistently, year after year, until you get what you want? Or is it because the council does not know what it needs? Can I speak right. Yes, uh, we, we, I'll give you all a chance to quickly just give a quick comment on that. Thank you. Starting with you, sir. I know uh, there really wasn't a question in there, but I will put a challenge to the seven people up here. Um, Chris and I talked about this the other day in regards to someone here is going to be on council. Step, the six other people have been through this community and talked to the businesses and talked to the people and understood the priorities, <coughs> and needs, the questions. If we all got together afterwards and created just a meeting and opportunity that we could list the priorities and everything we've heard, we could put that person forward to council with a lot more ammunition in order to make them a strong councilman. And I'm all for it if you all would agree. All right, thanks. Anybody else want to leave a comment on that? Thank you. Just want to comment with Andrew on the land. We have land. Here's the problem. In this municipality, which is almost different than any other municipality in all of Canada, the land is crowned. The UDSR, the Urban Development Subregion, gave us land all the way around, almost tripling the size of the Fort McMurray uh, region. The problem is the land release is going first to Parsons Creek when it's developed. You have Salem Creek that is going to be developed, and after that, there is talk about Forest Heights being developed, which is across the river. That requires two bridges. So they're laying it up in such a way that they don't crash the market. So we have land here, but we're in that pickle we've all talked about. How do you create all this now that we're here without crashing that market and having everyone just turn their keys in like they did in 1985? So we have a real problem here. So it's, the oil prices are gonna go up and down. We're gonna have that issue of how we deal with this land and how we re how the government releases it to the municipality is 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 a lot of work with the Thank governance. You. So there there were a couple questions in there. I'll I'll pick one I guess. Um, why don't why doesn't democracy continue the same as after an election? The the sad reality is a lot of people uh, go back to work. A lot of people go back to what they are doing. And when there is an election, there's a renewed interest in the, the issues and concerns. Uh, one of the things I can say that we should be doing, or we all should be doing, we're all guilty of it, is attending more meetings, getting out the functions. Uh, a couple councillors right now hold uh, a get together every few months, I think, once quarterly. Show up, drag a friend, drag a first time there. Let's, uh, the more people who show up and the more people who talk about the issues, the better our community will be. Uh, we hold a monthly meeting in my organization. Uh, we hold a monthly meeting where our members are free to come and talk about the concerns and, and what we're better for. So take advantage of what's out there and drag a friend. Thank you. Next.
Nice to see you again, Andrew, and I agree. It was in the 2013 general election, it was pretty it was a pretty neat experience. A lot of good relationships formed, I think, with these candidates. Um, I think something I wanted to see from the last election was the talking stick kind of turn into something where you could do a report card almost on counselors and say, this is what you responded to and said you were going to do, and whether or not they've done that. And that would be an amazing thing. The talking stick answers, as far as I know, are still up on there. So that might be something someone might want to consider. Um, continuing your <laughs> community engagement is very important. So watching council meetings, going to engagement sessions, doing the surveys, that kind of thing are definitely important. And I wholeheartedly agree, Monty, that I think regardless of whoever is successful, if we all meet and collaborate, I think that would be fantastic. It really puts up um, the successful individual in a good place and shows the community commitment and collaboration. So I would totally be on board with that. So put me down. <laughs> Hello. You want me to speak on the democracy? Uh, Andrew's comments, everybody has Oh, I want uh, Andrew uh, the question. I fully agree that there will be full-time participation of all the councillors. Uh, part-time is not on. I can tell you with all the surety, my son was a part-timer, his attitudes were different with my business. Once he was full-time, his attitudes were different. The part-times, you know, 16 years, 17 years, they are on the council. And you want to see the output? Your people have seen the uh, audit report. Why are they, uh, why it is so? It is so because people are least interested, just they want to raise hand, yes or no. I wanted to have a meeting with the counselor, I said, why do you want to ask, why do you want to meet me? I want to meet you because you are my leader and every time uh, I should be giving you some of my problems. Now, uh, once I went to see Mayor, after three, uh, I got the time after three weeks, after two weeks. After two weeks, maybe my problem is over, my, I have an immediate problem to talk to somebody there must be somebody there who could immediately entertain the residents. So, council has to be full time. Now, what the council is doing? They are doing their own original works. And for council, there is some additional authority and some additional payment. This is what all is happening. And when there is something bad, everybody starts looking towards each other. Oh, I'm part time and all is part time. Thank you, Mohan. I really appreciate it. This thing that. should not be there. It should be full time participation of the council. Thank you. Okay. I mean, you want to say that? I, right. I will. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Andrew, you were saying that I fully believe, actually, that um, that is part of our problem, especially federally and provincially, why our region doesn't get the representation or the coming back into our region that we deserve for our output is because we don't vote. If we don't vote and participate, then we have nothing to hold up and say, we demand better of our government. So that is part one. And part two, actually being a counselor previously, is that I can let you know that I could probably count, unfortunately, on my hands how many times people sent me an email from the community. And that is part of the participation. Um, I absolutely commend Councillor McGrath and the other councillors that started the quarterly meetings. I think that was a great idea and something that I definitely want to continue and grow upon. The accessibility to the councillors has to be available. The um, input from the community on an ongoing basis has to be there. It's a teamwork, it's a collaboration, and that's why I say don't vote for me. I say join me. Join me in building a community that is livable, strong, and ours, and we together, in partnership, will make a community that we are all are proud of. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry I won't entertain any more questions. We are past out of time. And, uh, but I would like the audience to please thank the candidates for us. I would like the candidates to please thank the audience for being here. Otherwise, we can listen to each other. All of you, thank you for Zafar and his uh, association for supporting this. We really appreciate that. And I hand over the time now to Zafar to end up this uh, meeting. Thank you. Let's thank you for making us 20 minutes late. Well, uh, <laughs> it's decent time if we go. Uh, the part of the world I come from, we are uh, 11 hours behind in summer and 12 hours in winter. So I was still, still out of time. 20 minutes is nothing, but I do apologize.
Uh, I thank you all for being here. It was a very useful debate. And uh, it was mentioned we have to stay in touch with people. Uh, you and I sat in here and collected a lot of information, find out a lot of that. I do that on a daily basis. Under no authority, I collected at two points. You collected during the public transportation, I collected the motor. That's what takes me to stay engaged with all these things. And I would uh, ask you, we uh, have a think tank, we sit down regularly, we talk about the problem, and try to come about, come, come about, about the solution of it. I would like to request you all to stay in touch with us. Uh, thank you very much for everybody coming out. And I apologize for being a little late. And uh, if you do happen to talk to your other friends, just tell them that how useful it was to be here, to talk about the community, community's problems, and its solutions. And I would like to start a thinking with the person uh, who I always forget, is Brian Shepard. And, uh, uh, he does a lot of things for our association. And thank you, Willie. Thank you, Miyasa. And I can't thank you guys enough. Be encouraged enough and come out and contest this thing. I know it's going to be one elected, but I like to see all seven of you friends discussing in the same way after the election is over. And uh, thank you very much. Free to stay here till midnight. We have the place. Since <laughs> these people have a very busy schedule, I apologize keeping you a little over than four o'clock. But then, thank you again and stay in walk. And thank you. Yeah, that did. Um, I have given each candidate a table where you can talk to them, speak to them. It's mix and mingle. Coffee is here. I hope it's brewed by now. Because <laughs> right now before, uh, a lot of stuff sitting here.